Hi there guys, I'm not going to be out here too long at any one time today, it's uh, below freezing and freezing rain outside. Anyway, just we're back to the uh, motorised turntable, making a bit more progress and planning for the next stages. This, um, hang on a minute, I have made some, just to update here, the foot switch we got a piece of leather each side which was actually suggested by one of the comments stop the spring escaping and uh, then we got four four rubber feet which don't grip an awful lot but uh, they should help on the uh, floor position so that's done uh, instead of the lash up with the screw clip what I'm going to try and do I'm still going to use this piece of aluminum angle because that really suits the purpose pretty well but uh, in order to avoid using the screw clamp I had to dig through what I've got <laughs> you've heard that before haven't you what have I got um, this piece of aluminum tube not much of it a bit scruffy that is, this is the slightly larger diameter which comes out at, uh, I forget what it is now, it's about one and a quarter, no it isn't, it's just under one and a half. So although it's not a good fit, I think one option here is, um, let me just see the mark on there, I'm going to cut a slice off here. And then the lower end, which is around the gearbox, uh, will make three equally spaced set screws. And then between the set screws, so that it doesn't interfere, we'll put a larger hole through sufficient to access a bolt, possibly two bolts. The idea being to go you may not, it's difficult to explain actually, have two, two uh, clearance holes from side to side and just enough access for a screwdriver we'll use a uh, small bolt, two small bolts and uh, washers and nuts this side and that will hold this perpendicular and do up the set screws to secure the motor and the set screws will give a small amount of height adjustment within the limits of my initial guess <laughs> all right well, I cut a slice off the tube uh, faced the ends giving it a bit of a polish it's not quite as ugly as it was and for set screws the division thereof <laughs> it's about as simple and primitive as it gets. Cut a piece of paper to the circumference and uh, wrap that. Oh, we're going out of frame there, I think. Wrap that round. So, all I've got here is the strip of paper divided into three and marked up so we'll transfer that to the uh, tube and we can then we can drill and tap for uh, some set screws not cone points they'll be uh, what I might call cup ended so they don't damage the motor okay we've made some progress here those who have seen parts one and two of the uh, turntable project you may remember that I was initially mounting the motor to this piece of angle uh, with this um, screw clip and I didn't think that was good enough it's alright for a lash up but uh, needs to be better so the piece of tube that I've described and I marked up into thirds that was to get 
uh, one, two, three, uh, five by point eight set screws, and the motor is actually a loose fit. You see, it's loose, but the uh, set screws will lock up on the gearbox. Now the other holes, which may seem a bit strange, <laughs> is these humongous holes here I had to make to access underneath here to make some countersinks and it was a hell of a stretch I could barely reach and I had to do all sorts of bits of cheating. So what we've done now is to take the uh, angle which has been drilled and tapped. It actually didn't need to be tapped at all when I think about it, but I did. So I'm going to start putting this together and I'll show you, you know, what we've got in mind. Uh, I meant to mention the uh, screws I'm using are a 6x1 metric. I've actually machined both of them down a bit on the head. I've got enough Phillips left to be usable, but I've had to do every trick in the book to try and get these countersunk sufficiently inside the tube. Well there's the tube mounted to the angle and you might be able to see those screws are just about countersunk enough. I've actually had to run a file over the top just to clear a few thou to get it right. Once they're there they're not going to move anymore and uh, I don't even bother to cut them off. I'm going to put a couple of nuts on the back I did file uh, a slight flat on this side of the tube. It's very minimal, just enough to seat better. And uh, so I put the nuts on, which we don't really need. So now we'll put the motor in, which is a fairly, fairly fiddly job and got to get the height just about right. I've got a mark somewhere which I've used as a reference. Try and get the set screws done up equally. Not that it really matters all that much. Anyway, roughly speaking, we are, we're more or less equal spaced all the way around, give or take and the advantage of the set screws is that there's a, a bit of leeway for moving the motor up and down apart from pulley position and the set screws are put on this lower part because they're bearing on the gearbox which is definitely stronger than the top section of the motor. Right well I really must trim this uh, corner sometime Get rid of, I've got a sharp edge here um, so there it is in position, the motor, and that position there is, shall we say, the um, setup for the to get the belt on. Uh, so you can see, we with adjustment, small adjustment of the pulley position on the shaft, and the motor in this casing, uh, we can get pretty well spot on. For the belt, so I come back to get the belt on. I probably get my hand in the way all the time here. Let's get the belt on the pulley. And then bring the motor back and get some tension. And tighten up there. And that belt tension is now pretty good. I can't turn it because of the gearbox obviously. But um, that gives me all the adjustment I need for the belt and I've disconnected the wires from this motor but I have actually out of interest I've got the 5 rpm motor came today 
So the next step is to experiment with this motor and uh, and uh, my little speed controller. See what performance is like from that and then try the uh, 5 RPM motor and see if that's good just on its own. It may well be I'll come back to this 30 RPM one and just use speed control. So we'll see where we go next when I pick up on the next video clip. I did mean to add, <laughs> I found this piece of quite heavy gauge steel tube actually, I'm trying to think, it's probably, I don't know, 16 gauge, very substantial. It did occur to me to cut some slots in it and uh, to allow space for the belt and to go over this base angle and uh, maybe put a top on it. It's really, I don't think it's really necessary, but it's just another option. Uh, otherwise, I'll probably just make some sort of cover. We're only concerned with keeping weld spatter off it. Right, well, we've got some progress here. I'm um, getting close to completion. I might well just <clears throat> finish this off in another video and uh, the uh, cover type of system that I need here that's probably not going to happen in a hurry the chances are I can put something dis um, something that's dispensable shall we say over the top even if it's a damp plastic cup um, but we'll have a cover of some sort eventually and there's still the aspect of uh, grounding I've yet got to work that out but for the most part I should be probably working on low current stuff and uh, chances are if I work out some overhead support for the ground clip to the workpiece we'll manage. I'll come up with something better later. In fact any other later modifications I'll probably do another video but that might be well ahead so I'm going to call this all but, all, all but finished really. So what we've got here is um, this little plastic box, it's actually an old Agfa film box from back in the year dot. It is adequate for holding what I want. I'll show you inside it in a minute because there's not much in there. And with the potentiometer off and the foot switch operated, nothing happens. Turn that up to full and we get what I used to get on the uh, test situation. Which is a bit fast for some work, a lot of it. So now if we crank this down and go to the bottom end, uh, here's the uh, 5 RPM motor. I'm probably going to try that but I think we may well find that this is just about right for the job. If I go too low on the setting we get a typical... well it's not coming in yet. You can reach a stage where it starts to get a bit jumpy. So I can get down to that which is probably not far off what the 5 RPM motor would do, so <laughs> having got the motor it may well just be put in the spares box somewhere. Alright, and then up to full speed, which might be handy if I'm just spray painting something. So I've got, uh, for the time being, I'm running off a battery, 12 volt spare, 12 volt gel pack. Uh, I've got a main power supply but the thing I'm a bit concerned about is like a lot of um, a lot of power supplies are relatively high voltage if you're pushing out 12 if you're actually using 12 volts they'll often be pushing out 18 until the current's drawn and uh, my speed control here is basically 12 volt tops and I don't want to over voltage it and on the rare occasion I'm using this, it'll be a case of a battery 
for the duration of the work. This is only drawing, I think I said in an earlier video, 250, 300 milliamp, nothing really is it? Let me just get a look inside the box. So just recapping on the uh, motor situation, that's the new mounting. And then the box here, there's not much in it. Just a little PCB with the potentiometer and uh, the connector is for the foot switch that just breaks the incoming supply and then the motor lead and that's it so I think that may do for now guys and uh, any extra to add to it probably at considerable later stage we'll make another bit of video but I'm going to call that done for the time being okay thanks for watching